Jan Egland, welcome to the program from Rafa. Thank you very much. What is it like to be there and see it for the first time? We've heard a lot, we've seen pictures, we hear reports from inside. What are you seeing with your own eyes? Well, uh, Christiana, it, you have to come to Gaza to understand the devastation, the destitution and the desperation of the, of the people here. I have never in my many, many years as an aid worker seen a place that has been so bombarded for such a long time with such a trapped population without any escape. So people are traumatized beyond belief. They live under the most horrific conditions. I was in the school today with uh, 50 people sleeping in a small classroom. Uh, you know, 250, 200 people sharing one latrine and no real water, food, uh, too few mattresses even. Uh, we're trying to do all we can as the Norwegian Refugee Council, but we're really, really overstretched in this ocean of needs. Jan Eglund, you know, finally the international community has started to airdrop some aid. But what we saw was that some of it <coughs> dropped into the sea. And the pictures are really ones of, you know, I mean, total just panic. People are scavenging, people are yes. fighting each other, people are trying to get the, yes. you know, plastic, I guess they're military rations. Can there be no better way of delivering aid, even in the midst of a war? There can be a much better way, really. And it's up to Israel, with the United States and Egypt, to fix it. Uh, of course, airdrops is something of a very last resort. You do that to besiege areas, as we did in Syria, when the Islamic State was, was, was besieging it and so on. Jordan is doing some airdrops. It's very costly, it's very limited and very hard to do. The solution is to get the Rafah crossing and Kerem Shalom to work according to its purpose and according to its capacity. Mm -hmm. I could see many hundreds of trucks lined up at the Rafah crossing when I came today in Kerem Shalom. It's, it has been days with only a handful of, uh, mm -hmm. of trucks, even though they have a much bigger capacity from the Israeli side. But there they let extremists, extremists block the aid to the children and women, the innocent, on this side. L let me ask you then, because you're in Rafa specifically, uh, you've probably had some access towards Khan Yunus, but what a lot of people are very concerned about right now, including the residents who we can manage to hear from, are in the north. There's a picture that we're going to play. It's a mother who says there's no more milk in the enclave, or at least up there. So she's wrapping a date in a gauze and letting her baby boy suck on it as if to suck all the juice out of this yeah. date. We have heard that there are stories of young children saying that they would rather die. We've heard adults say they are going to, they're preparing to die. They think they will all die. Can you get to the north where we understand there is a famine rising there? What do you know about the north? Will you go to the north? I I'm not able myself now to go to the north. NRC has eight aid workers in the north and they are themselves starving. We got a little bit of food to our aid workers the other day, but the convoys have really been thoroughly looted from the desperation and lawlessness in this bombarded north. So there is very little aid. There is very little uh, supplies there to start with, so famine is breaking out there. There is no other way to just describe it, which again shows that the Kani crossing, which is also from Israel, the, Israel could fix this. They are the occupying power. They have the uh, overwhelming military superiority. They could have convoys going over Kani crossing, which is in the middle area from where you can easily reach the north. It's very hard from here south in Rafa and Karim Shalom area. Why do you think they are not? Why do you think a basic 
food and water and medicine supplies are not happening? Well, I, I, because of what is a misconception of military expediency, let's just smash the place and, and, and thereby reach very fast our military objective. They're not reaching, haven't reached their military objective after all of these months. I hope that to see some sanity and humanity on the Israeli side. This is not the Israel I know from 40 years of cooperation, including through the Oslo Agreement. Then there was always possibilities to reason and to get aid to, uh, to Palestinians uh, in need. Uh, I hope to see days where this comes back.